What's up guys? Welcome back to the Talari Boys channel. Today we are doing another MX-5 video. We haven't done a video on this bike in a while, but today we installed a new controller on it. This is the Nuclear P24F. We've had several of these in the past. We're running one on our Talaria Triple X right now. We've run one on our MX-4 previously. We really like this controller. And what we're trying to achieve here is getting more power out of the stock battery and the stock motor on the MX-5. So today we're gonna test it, see how it goes, drag race it against a stock MX-5, do some top speed runs and talk about overall how this controller feels, how much it costs, and if it's worth the money, let's get into it. Let's start right off with the most important stuff about this controller. All of you guys are gonna be wondering the price and it is $895 shipped to the USA. This controller is not really readily available in the US, but you can order it and it comes for only $895, which in my opinion is a really good deal. A lot of other controllers are $1,100, $1,200, $1,300, depending on what you're getting. This is the controller itself here. It comes with this really nice mounting shroud that makes the controller pretty much look OEM. It, pretty much mounts right into your skid plate here. It's very secure. It's not the easiest install process because of that, but it looks really nice, really well done and premium. This controller is rated to about 25, 26 kilowatts of power. That's what we're running on our Talaria Triple X. And we've been doing that for over a year now. Haven't had any issues with the controller. This controller is only rated to 500 phase amps, which is gonna be plenty for our stock battery. However, if you were to upgrade your battery, you may be limited a little bit in not being able to run as much torque as this motor or other upgraded motors could handle, if that makes sense. 500 phase amps is kind of like middle of the line. Our EBMX X9000 controllers can run 900 and 1000 phase amps on the most powerful motors. There are other controllers that also limit you to 500, just like this one, like the Torp TC500. That's basically why it's called the TC500. So with that being said, we're gonna have plenty of torque and power to max out our stock battery today. But if you were planning to do a full upgraded build on your MX-5, another controller might be the way to go to get a little bit of extra torque. Let's look at the display because this controller has a really nice display. So up here, we have a center display Typically, this mounts with a GoPro mount that mounts to your steer tube on top of your stock stem. Because we're running a direct mount stem and a stem lock, the mount that they sent with it wouldn't work. So right now, we literally just have it taped on here for now. On our Tolaria XXX, we have a custom like GoPro mount that we got on Amazon. It did allow us to mount it right here. But for right now, if we turn it on, let's look at this. Obviously, we got some tape on there. It's not really covering up the screen. We have this whole display here and you can go in and this is where you do all your programming. So you can go in here, you run your motor calibration, set your tune, set your different modes, and then you select your mode when you're riding with the start button. So right now we're in neutral and you can go to one, two, and three, they show right there. You can toggle through the different modes. You can see how many watts you're pulling instantly, how many watt hours you've used, your voltage, your amps, all that cool stuff you can see. So I really like this display. It's really nice. It's got a nice battery chart here that'll go down as the battery drains. And if you hold this, you're gonna get into the onboard computer where you can go into devices, select your controller, and here is all those settings that you can change and set up. We have a full video going over all the settings and how to change it and adjust it and calibrate your motor that we filmed about a year ago. We'll put a link to that down in the video description. That's gonna help you get your bike set up. And then because the MX-5 battery is different, it's rated to more power than the previous MX-4 model, we'll put our recommended settings also in the video descriptions so you guys can get your bike set up perfectly and have it running nice and smooth. It is time for the drag race portion of this video. Reed's been getting that bike tuned up. What have you been doing? Yep, I've been dialing it in. I've been turning up the settings slowly until the battery cuts out. And once the battery cuts out, I go down just a hair and I've got it dialed in just perfect. Let's go see if this can beat the stock MX-5. Yeah, Reed spent a good amount of time and we gotta see how this does in comparison because on our previous upgraded controller on our MX-5, the EBMX X9000, we didn't really get any increased performance all around. You could tune it so you had more low end, but then you had less top end or vice versa. Mm -hmm. And we're hoping this will be the full package and we'll have good power anywhere we want it. We've always felt like the EVMX controller just doesn't work perfect with stock batteries, just trying to get the max power out. 
we've always thought the nuclear does the best at it. So let's go see. Yeah. Just for reference, Reed's about five pounds lighter than I am. Both bikes are on stock tires and totally stocked. That bike has a few little show upgrades plus the controller. Here we go. Three, two, one, go. I think I might've jumped him just a little and there he goes. Oh man, he's winning by a huge amount. We're doing 50, crossing the line at 50 miles an hour up the hill. Skirt. The settings on the nuclear are a little more complex than some of the other controllers, but once you get it dialed, it feels so nice to ride. Yeah, Reed was saying it's it's always been his favorite controller as far as feel goes, but it's like I talked about in the beginning of the video, we need more phase amps or torque to be able to run this controller on our high power bikes, and so that's why we don't do it as often. I think we should do another one, we should trade, and then I think we need to race the E-Ride 3.0 against that. That's gonna be a closer race. All right, drag race number two, switched riders. I'm now on the nuclear bike. Reed's on stock. Here we go. Three, two, one, go. I got him. This thing's fast. I don't think it's gonna have the top speed though. That's just what it feels in that drag race, but we gotta get out the GPS and test it. This thing just stops pulling at like 50. Time for race number three. Reed's on the E-Ride Pro SS 3.0 stock, except for we did put a 54 tooth sprocket on it. So that's gonna change it up just a little, but we're very, very close. Here we go. Three, two, one, go. Oh, okay. Wow. Oh no. I slowed down. That's weird. I was like gaining on him and gonna pass him and then I stopped accelerating. It just kept, it just like hit a wall. Okay guys, we're gonna quickly do a top speed run on a on our totally stock MX-5 stock tires and everything. So we can have a perfect comparison of the nuclear bike and the stock bike on the same day in the same weather since it is pretty cold here in Utah. So the speeds are probably gonna be different than when we tested it like back in August when the bike came out. We'll see how it goes here. GPS says, but I think that Speedo's really pretty accurate. All right, so we got the same top speed as our display, 59 miles per hour, which is really good for this cold weather we're in. Let's see how the nuclear does. Time for the top speed run on the nuclear bike. Let's see how we do here. I have a feeling we're not gonna be as fast as that stock bike I just tested, but we gotta give it our best shot here. just like hits this limit at 52 miles an hour. Interesting. Well, as you guys saw, as I was holding up that GPS, we only got about 52 miles an hour and it just hits this hard wall. It like is accelerating really hard and then just stops accelerating and just won't let you go any faster even though it feels like the bike should be able to. Nuclear did this on our Talaria Sting R's as well. They would only go about 52 miles an hour. All right, let's go back in the garage and we're gonna talk a little bit more in depth about this. All right guys, we are back in the garage with the MX-5 with the nuclear controller. As you guys saw in those drag races and the top speed run, we got some interesting performance. And the MX-5 has kind of been like that for us as we've tried the other EBMX X9000 controller on it. Both of the bikes with controllers could not get the same top speed as a stock MX-5, which is really interesting. The nuclear is allowing us to pull more power than the EBMX controller could on the stock battery. We are getting higher performance 
and more power and more torque. So that's been really, really nice to feel. I also really love the way the controller actually feels in the throttle. So we'll talk about that in a second. We're not gonna show any riding clips or footage today. Our trails are covered in snow, but we've had this controller mounted for long enough that we did get a break in the weather and I, did, and I was able to go out and ride it and experience it. And we've also experienced this controller on our Tellari Sting MX-4 and our Tellari XXX we've been running for a long time now. So the settings we are running right now are 205 battery amps and we're running about 500 phase amps. And we've been able to pull somewhere in the range of 14 and a half to 15 and a half kilowatts. It's hard to say because of battery sag. It's hard to know exactly the kilowatts that we're actually achieving. However, you guys saw the drag race against the E-Ride 3.0. That bike is a 16 kilowatt bike. You saw that this bike was right neck and neck with it and that it really beat the stock MX-5 by a good margin. So that kind of just shows you where in line it sits and how much extra performance we're getting out of the stock battery. Now that you guys understand the performance that you're getting out of this controller, as well as the top speed, let's talk about how it actually feels to ride. We have the throttle settings just in bone stock configuration. We didn't even go in and change anything. You can go into the display and you can select a variety of different throttle profiles and throttle curves and how aggressive you want it to be. But that's what I love so much about nuclear is just the way it delivers power to the bike from the twist of your wrist. It just feels good. It feels good to wheelie. It feels aggressive yet smooth. And I, I really like, this is probably my favorite controller in how the power feels on a stock battery setup. I really love the way that my EBMX controller feels once I have a ton of power under my bike, like on my Suron Light B that has 25 to 30 kilowatts. I think they really nailed that configuration. However, in the low power mode, this feels amazing. It just feels so smooth, but it also feels good at high power too. Our Tellaria Triple X is running 25 kilowatts, and I think that feels amazing. So don't shy away from nuclear because they're a smaller company and because you may feel like they haven't quite figured out how to make the bike feel good because it absolutely does. And we absolutely love this controller. You guys may have to get around mounting your display just like we have. You can buy different GoPro adapters. It essentially mounts the same three prong mount that any GoPro does. Our Tellari Triple X, we went on Amazon, we found a mount that would work up on our bar here that we mounted our display on. We haven't quite purchased something for this bike yet, but hopefully you guys enjoyed this video and at the end of the day, it's up to you whether you think this controller is worth the $900. For me, me and Reed just talked. We think we would love having this controller even though we don't get as much top speed as a stock bike. Having the extra power, the extra torque, and the amazing feeling throttle is worth it for the off-road type riding single track that we like to do. But it's up to you guys. If you guys are interested in this controller, check the link down in the video description. It'll be there. You can also select a regen thumb brake. We forgot to add that when we got this controller, but you can add that and you can do regen braking just like the stock bike, but you should be able to turn up the power even more essentially. So that's super cool. Huge shout out to Nuclear for sending this controller out to us specifically for our MX-5. Thank you for the support and we are going to be doing another giveaway when we hit 50,000 subscribers. We're just about at 40,000 right now, so we have 10,000 more to go. So if you guys want us to do another giveaway even sooner, share our channel with your friends, with your family, hit that subscribe button, hit that like button, help us grow, and we're gonna be giving away some epic bikes as soon as that happens. Thanks for watching, we'll catch you next video, see ya.